In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst. He is our Last night was a beautiful blessing. A, a number of our high school and middle school children came uh, to Vespers, and it was an opportunity we haven't been together in a while, and we were in the church. And it was uh, in the evening, and just a few lights in the church, and we're talking about making the baptism of our Lord what it means in our, our present life. And we were talking about some of the current issues that are happening today. And I asked, uh, I asked a young man, I said, okay, if you were invited by the White House and the House and Senate, and you, had, uh, and you really wanted to share a message, especially what's all the turmoil, I said, in, in a few words, what would you say? And Nicholas nailed it. He said, I would tell everyone, stop being selfish. Be selfless. I'm a teenager. And somebody asked me, what would you do? I said, I'd take a long time and do a very long ayasmo, a long blessing. And uh, on a very serious note, if you listen to these words of the epiphany from the service, listen to these words. When John immersed and baptized the Lord in the Jordan, the mission of Christ and the path of our salvation were shown. That is to say, the Lord took upon Himself the sins of mankind and died under them. Immersion. And became alive again, coming out of the water. And we must die as the old sinful man and become alive again and cleansed, renewed, and regenerated. This is the Savior and this is the path of salvation. We are called to renew our baptism. The Feast of the Lord's Baptism shares with us a very personal message for us. Live up to your calling. Life is a journey. Life is a journey requiring the right path, the right course. I read a story of a, a ship, true story of a ship, and it speaks to those of you, I know nothing about sailing, but they say in sailing that three, one, two, three, three degrees can mean the difference of 10, 10 miles. And there was a true story of a ship, I think the ship was called the Argo, and it was sailing, it was sailing off the ship, the sail the, off the New England coast. And it ran aground, and it lost all its cargo. And the, late, and the captain later explained that the ship was three degrees off course. Only three degrees. Think about this huge ship. It was only three degrees off course. Those three degrees meant a difference of 10 miles. At a point, the ship hit ground. I believe no one was injured, thank God. Those three degrees off course caused the ship's instruments, which were worth tens of thousands of dollars to stop working, malfunction. And in the darkness, now the captain could not see that he was approaching land. Our precious life can be like that. The Christian life is a journey to the kingdom of God. Are we aligning our life with God? Do we feel our life is a shipwreck? If we do not have a guiding light in our life, we will be lost. If we do not follow Christ in our life, we will be lost. Christ said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. How can we truly live a life that is walking in the light 
of Christ. The gospel offers, it's not a secret. Change your course. Change your course and head in a new direction. And this is the meaning of the last words of Jesus in today's gospel. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance, repentance means changing course and heading in a new direction. Repentance is God's gift to a fresh start and a clean slate. This is why the church fathers, they, they call confession, the sacrament of confession, they call it a, a second baptism. They call it a baptism of tears. I have a feeling that most of us, I know I have, have gone off course more than three degrees and have made more than one shipwreck in our life. The Gospel tells us, the baptism of our Lord, His message is, leave the past and perhaps even the present shipwrecks of your life. Leave the old selfish and the sinful old self. Leave it behind. What is the most what is the most important prayer in the Orthodox Church? What's the most important prayer? What's the most important prayer? It's very, it's very short. Just a few words. Who said Kiri Eleison? Lord have mercy. Thank you, Olympia. Lord have mercy. You think about it, the divine liturgy what is the divine liturgy? What is the goal? What is the hope of the divine? What is the prayer of the divine liturgy? But to set us on a course. That's why our church, that's why we face East and the joy of the resurrection. And I encourage you, all of you, all of us, the most beautiful prayer, the Jesus prayer. Many of you have a komboskini, and if you don't, let me know. I have some gifts from the monastery, Father Lucithios. And don't wear it as, it's, it's not a decoration. It's not jewelry. It's a prayer robe. It's meant to pray. And at each knot, we say the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. This prayer of repentance. Again, the most important prayer most important petition in the church, Lord, have mercy. St. Isaac the Syrian wrote, this life has been given to you for repentance. In other words, this life so we can change. This life has been given to you for repentance. He says, do not waste it on other things. This delightful gift of repentance by which the soul is set free from sin and death. The Gospel today in Matthew, he quotes from Isaiah, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. There is a connection between repentance and the light of Jesus Christ. Bishop Kallistos Ware, he writes, until you have seen the light of Christ, you cannot really see your sins. Until you have seen the light of Christ, you cannot really see your sin. Life is a journey. Life is a journey requiring the right path, the right course, the right light in our life. Life is repentance. Life is repentance, which allows the light of Christ to be in our life. As the Dether Father shared, the closer a person comes to God, a closer a person comes to God, the more he or she, she sees that he or she is a sinner. You really discover who you are and how you can grow in given hope in Christ. My brothers and sisters, renew your baptism today. Live up to the calling to be a child of God's life that you were meant to be. Live a life that is 
growing closer to God, growing closer and experiencing His light every day. Um, please rise.